In the last video we looked at a basic introduction to thirds. In this video we're going to look at multiplying and dividing with thirds. The first rule we're going to look at now is the root of a multiplied by the root of a and that gives us a. So for example if we have the root of 10 multiplied by the root of 10 the answer would be 10. If we have now the root of a multiplied by the root of b, this gives us the root of a multiplied by b, which we can write as the root of a b. We can also use this property in reverse to write the root of a b, can be written as the root of a multiplied by the root of b. When we're looking at division, if we have the root of a divided by the root of b, we can write this now as the root of a divided by b. So when we're simplifying fractions, this property can be used in either direction to help us out. All we're going to do is look at some basic examples now and employ these particular rules for some multiplication and division with thirds. So we're asked to simplify the following. The root of 6 multiplied by the root of 6, that is just going to give us 6. If you want to see this now as the root of 6 multiplied by 6, that would give us now the root of 36, which we know to be a perfect square, and that's 6. Ultimately, though, if we simply employ the property the root of a multiplied by the root of a is equal to a, that's nice and straightforward. Okay, with this one here, we've got now the root of 2 multiplied by the root of 5. So here we don't have a and a, we have a and b. So we can write this now as the root of 2 times by 5, and that would give us now the root of 10. So this now is in its simplest form. We couldn't break this down. For example, now, well, we saw in the last video, the root of 8 could be written as 2 root 2. We can't simplify the root of 10. With this one here, we've got the root of 3 multiplied by the root of 6. There are a couple of different ways of looking at this. This would give me now the root of 3 multiplied by 6, which gives me now the root of 18. I could rewrite this now as the root of 9 multiplied by the root of 2, as 9 goes into 18, which we could now write as 3 root 2. If that doesn't make any sense to you, do go back and check the previous video. Alternatively here, what we could have done is written this now as root of 3 multiplied by, and if we just think about the root of 6, that's the root of 2 multiplied by the root of 3. So I could write this like so. So this is a different approach. So here, this is the root of 6 by splitting it up using the root of AB is root of A times by the root of B. Root 3 times by root 3 is 3, and then we'd have 3 root 2. So this one right here, if we did this one, we've got the root of 2 multiplied by the root of 6, which would give us the root of 2 times by 6, which is the root of 12, which we could write now as the root of 4, 4 times by 3, again we saw this in a previous video, and write that as 2 root 3. Alternatively, you could write that one now as the root of 2 times by the root of 2 times by the root of 3, with this part being the root 6, root 2 times by root 2 is 2, and that would give us 2 root 3. If we look at the next one, we could write this now as the root of 7 times by 14. So if we did that, 7 times by 14 is going to give us 98. We could spot that this was going to be 2 lots of 49. So 49 times by 2, which would give us 7 root 2. Alternatively, we could spot this now as the root of 2 times by the root of 7, multiplied by the root of 7, that would give us the 7, and we'd have 7 root 2. So, nice and straightforward, nice and logical. With this one, we've got a few different approaches. 
If I go back a page, I can reverse this particular rule and use that to my advantage. So what I'm going to do here is write that this is the root of 2 over the root of 3. So if we have the root of a over b, it's the root of a over the root of b. Multiplied now by the root 3, we can see using basic multiplication laws with fractions that these will cancel and that will give me now root 2. So it simply gives me root 2. If you didn't spot this, you could have written this now as the root of 2 times by 3 divided by 3 and then cancelled off like so. I think it's easier though to simply split it this way and go ahead and do that. Okay, the next one, we've got the root of 2 multiplied by the root of 2 multiplied by the root of 2. As soon as we have a pair multiplied, that will give us the integer value under the root. So we've got here two lots of root 2, and we could write that like so. We saw this being split up with root a in reverse. The root of a multiplied by the root of a, well that's one of our laws, and that is simply going to give us now a. Here we've got 2 root 5 multiplied by 3 root 7. We first multiply the numbers on the outside and then we multiply the thirds. You can do it in any way. I like to do the 2 times by 3. So what we have then is the following. We have 6 root 5 multiplied by the root of 7. We can see these are prime numbers, both 5 and 7, so we would simply multiply them with the root of a multiplied by the root of b is the root of a, b. So this would give me 6 root 35. As we were doing in the last video, we were checking these on a calculator. These obviously will be non-calculator as they're checking your laws or your understanding of the laws of thirds. But if we put this in, assuming it gives us an exact answer, we get 6 root 35. With a calculator like this, it will give us what we call an exact answer. Don't decimalize it or truncate it, I should say, because this is a non-terminating, non-recurring decimal. That isn't the answer. It's just given now on here with the first seven decimal places. So it keeps going as we saw before. It's the same if we have pi. Pi will give us 3.14159, blah, blah, blah. But this just keeps going. That's an example of another irrational number. Okay, so there we go, 6 root 35. Let's look at this one just here. So we've got p root q, then we've got 3p squared root q. So we're multiplying these. So let's deal now with the p and the 3p squared. p multiplied by p squared is p cubed, so we would have 3p cubed. Now... We've got root q multiplied by root q. That's just going to give us q. So we could write it now as 3p to the power of 3, or 3p cubed. And then we're going to have now the q as root q times root q just gives us q. If we look at this one, we've got the root of 12 divided by the root of 3. So I'm going to use my property now to write this as the root of 12 over the root of 3. That gives me now the root of 4, which of course is 2. If you didn't use that property and you split this up, we've already seen that the root of 12 is 2 root 3 by simplifying over the root 3. The root 3's cancel to give us 2. So a couple of different approaches. I think it's easier just to write it back like so and use the property that the root of a over the root of b can be written as the root of a over b. So with this one we can reverse it or we can write it around this particular way. There's a brief video then on multiplying and dividing with thirds. If we just recap the rules, if we go back, if we have the root of a times by the root of a, that gives us a. The root of a multiplied by the root of b is root of ab, and of course we can work that in reverse, and the root of a over the root of b is the root of a over b.